Anderson. Hello, thanks for coming out. I'm, I'm excited to be here. Um, I'm pretty much excited to be anywhere at night because I do breakfast radio and I get up at quarter to four in the morning, which to be honest, isn't even morning. That's the middle of last night. You know, put it this way, guys, you'll know this. There is a part of your body that sometimes gets up a little earlier than you do. <laughs> put it this way, when my alarm goes off, like, guys know what I'm talking about, girls might only know it as this. <laughs> put it this way, when my alarm goes off at quarter to four, even my dick is going, seriously, dude, five more minutes. <laughs> The only reason my penis gets hard at quarter four in the morning is it's trying to reach the snooze button. <laughs> it's so early. So all I want to do on my days off on my holidays is sleep in. I don't want to go overseas. I just want to sleep in. I was at my parents' place a couple of weekends ago. Saturday morning, all I want to do is sleep in. Six o'clock in the morning, my mother, who's meant to love me, <laughs> came into my room, started shaking me and said, wake up, wake up. You're missing the best part of the day. <laughs> to which I said, press off! <laughs> or you'll be missing the best part of your face. <laughs> six o'clock in the morning is not the best part of the day. The best part of the day has never happened at six o'clock in the morning. I was so mad at my mum. I said, I've got to get revenge. I went out that night, got completely drunk, off my head, maggoted. Three o'clock in the morning, stumbled home. <laughs> into the house. Into mum's room. Wake up! I'm at a party where there's free beer. And I reckon I'm probably going to get a root. <laughs> You're missing the best part of the day! <laughs> parents will say ridiculous things to you. It's like when you're born, your parents are handed the baby and a book of cliches they must use to raise you. So like every parent uses exactly the same cliches, you know, you're missing the best part of the day. What time do you call this? If your father had settled for a blowjob, I wouldn't have ruined my life. Now, <laughs> <laughs> wear clean undies. Why are you going to wear clean undies? In case you get hit by a bus. Like the first thing you don't do when you get hit by a bus is shit yourself. <laughs> Oh, uh, don't pull faces. You better not pull faces, because if the wind changes, your face will stay that way. Shit, must have been windy at Michael Jackson's. <laughs> Were you born in a barn? Were you born in a barn? I had a smart ass answer to that as a kid. I said, Mum, Jesus was born in a barn. <laughs> and in that way, only mothers can do. She looked at me and said, yes, and see where it got him. <laughs> The one I always got the most was, I write in my hand in pen all the time. Mum goes, don't write in your hand in ink. You will die of ink poisoning. I have read the obituaries in the paper every day of my life. I have never seen dearly departed of ink poisoning. <laughs> Imagine if this day of war and terror and plague, you're in a hospital. Doctor, what is it? I'm sorry, son. Terminal ink poisoning. <laughs> what about me, doc? Running with scissors. What about me? went swimming within 30 minutes of eating. <laughs> well, my favourite one, when I knew I was really in trouble, was Mum would tell me how long she was in labour for to have me. That was the one when I really knew. William James Anderson, I was in labour for 40 hours to have you. That's cool, that's a long time, but it's not like I could do anything about it. It's not like I was in there going, no, it's all fine, actually. Stop pushing. Pretty comfy in here. Had the people in from changing wombs. You know? <laughs> and I can just imagine my mum, too. She's so impatient. She would have been there in the hospital going, come on. I'll just get out. It's been 40 hours. Get out. You're missing the best part of the day. <laughs> As I said.